Good evening and welcome to our Thursday edition of Primetime News. Thank you for joining me. I'm Selima Shumwefeleni Masipa. Before we commence with tonight's bulletin, the Primetime News cast and crew takes this opportunity to extend warmest wishes of good health and bliss to His Excellency President Dr. Hage Gengob on the occasion of his 82nd birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Hope you had a great one. Now leading tonight's bulletin, the Ministry of Home Affairs, Immigration, Safety and Security has announced that the use of national identity cards as travel documents between Namibia and Botswana has been extended to three additional border posts. Ishmael Mukovonda filed our lead report. The two countries signed a memorandum of agreement and launched the use of national ID cards as travel documents for the citizens of both countries at the Trans Kalahari Mamuno border post in February this year. The ministry, in a media statement on Tuesday, announced that the ID cards can also be used at the Ngoma, Impalela Island, and Mohemo border post with immediate effect. The ministry's executive director, Atin Maritz, stated that to use the national identity card as a travel document to Botswana, Namibians are advised to apply for the new look ID launched by the ministry in October 2021. The new look ID features a quick response code and a machine readable zone, which have replaced the fingerprint and the previous ID cards. Format complies with the international best practice recommended by the International Civil Aviation Organization. The ministry noted that the use of ID cards as travel documents will make border crossing easier, especially for border residents. For now, the national ID can only be used as a travel document to visit Botswana. Reporting for Primetime News, Diana Kauta. On to agricultural matters. More than 50 experts in agriculture are participating in a workshop in Ochivarongo in which a document will be designed to aid farmers in enhancing food production amidst the challenges posed by climate change. The two-day workshop, which commenced on Wednesday, is jointly organized by the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform, the Food and Agricultural Organization and the GIZ Agriculture Department. Mulisa Simiasa filed the story. Eric Petrus, the acting director for the Directorate of Agriculture, Production, Extension and Engineering Services, addressed the attendees saying the workshop will review the initial document on the Comprehensive Conservation Agriculture Program for 2015. It will subsequently validate a similar tentative document for Comprehensive Conservation Agriculture Program 11 covering the period 2023 to 2027. Allow me to draw your attention to the rationale and the relevance of the ministry and stakeholders resolve to promote conservation agriculture in Namibia. Namibia is, a, is an arid country with varying and low rainfall. Soil and terrain conditions generally not conducive to conventional agriculture and food production. CA has been promoted as an entry point to climate smart agriculture and has the potential to contribute towards mitigation of some, some of the climate change and food systems challenges in Namibia. The workshop's discussions will cover topics such as natural resource protection, organic soil cover through agroforestry promotion, and the encouragement of intercropping and diversification. These topics are intended to be integrated into the Comprehensive Conservation Agriculture Program 11 document, which will conclude in 2027. Reporting for Primetime News, Diana Kauta. Moving on. The Ministry of Gender Equality, Poverty Eradication and Social Welfare on Wednesday officially launched the nationwide consultation on the Persons with Disability Bill and National Policy. Deputy Minister of Marginalized People, Royal Twikoko, said the draft bill aims to domesticate the principles entrenched in the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability into Namibia's statutory framework. Jaconia Nehemia attended the launch and filed this report. 
Speaking on behalf of the Ministry of Gender Equality, Poverty Eradication and Social Welfare, Minister Doreen Yoka during the launch in Vanduk, Tuikoko said the convention places emphasizes on the importance of mainstreaming disability issues as the integral part of relevant strategies for sustainable development. The bill further aims to establish that Namibia, the Ministry of Gender Equality, Poverty Eradication and Social Welfare and the National Disability Council of Namibia in particular are assertive when it comes to matters and issues that relate to persons with disabilities. He said the consultation process will cover and engage all 14 regions to ensure that no persons with disability is left out. The ministry will conduct the consultation with several stakeholders, including the National Disability Council of Namibia. Now on to a story that is making headlines globally. West Africa's regional bloc on Wednesday said a military intervention in Junta, ruled Niger, was the last resort as Nigeria cut electricity supplies to intensify pressure on the country's coup leaders. Diana Kauta brings us the full report. Economy Community of West African States leaders on Sunday imposed trade and financial sanction on Niger and gave the coup leaders a week to reinstate President Mohamed Bazoum or face potential use of force. The political instability in Niger is a source of grave concern for us all. It threatens our shared vision of a peaceful, secure and prosperous West Africa, a vision that is impossible to achieve amidst political upheavals and disruptions to constitutional order. The task of restoring democratic governance in Niger is fraught with potential hurdles and complications. However, we cannot afford to be hamstrung by these challenges. Instead, we must confront them head on, drawing upon our shared experiences, wisdom, and the strength of our collective resolve. Niger's fifth coup since independence from France in 1960 has sparked alarm among the country's neighbors and Western allies. Reporting for Primetime News, Diana Kauta. Stay tuned for the business segment. Welcome to the Primetime Business segment where we bring you the latest updates on all things business and economics. The local business landscape leads the slot. Minister of Industrialization and Trade, Lucia Ipumbu, says the Enana Trade and Business Expo should serve as a vehicle for rural economic development as well as the improvement of people's lives. More insights from this report. Ipumbu said the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic and the ongoing global geopolitical situation call for united efforts to achieve self-reliance, particularly in terms of food production. She stressed that it is crucial for Namibians, especially in the Anguena region and Enana town, to explore innovative strategies that accelerate structural economic transformation, enabling businesses to adapt to changing times. 
Ipumbu further highlighted the significance of the expo as a platform for exchanging valuable business knowledge among participants, fostering collaborations that could lead to sustainable business ventures. It reiterated her ministry's commitment to promoting social economic development activities and initiatives like the expos, which play a pivotal role in driving economic growth, business development, and nurturing an entrepreneurial culture within the Namibian economy. Now, the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Constitutional and Legal Affairs recently visited the Wayawaya Sand community in the Zambezi region. The purpose of the visit is to assess the extent to which government's projects intended for the marginalized people are benefiting them as well as engage the recipients and establish other issues that could be improved. Addressing the meeting as a member of the community, Liswaniso revealed that many young children do go to school. However, there's many food shortage that keeps them out. Some of the challenges include a lack of school uniforms, peer pressure, and teenage pregnancies. He said the consultation process will cover and engage all 14 regions to ensure that no persons with disability is left out. The ministry will conduct the consultation with several stakeholders, including the National Disability Council of Namibia. In response to all the challenges, member of the standing committee, Aina Hengare, acknowledged that as a committee resolution such as resettlement, education, effective government programs are what they wish to implement to effectively deliver quality service to the marginalized people. That concludes our top news segment for tonight. Let's now shift our attention to the weather forecast and take a look at how the weather conditions are likely to unfold throughout the country tomorrow.
Welcome to Sport Planet, your ultimate destination for all things sports. The segment kicks off with football. Lionel Messi made it five goals in three appearances for Inter Miami as he scored twice in a 3-1 win over Orlando City in the League's Cup round of 32 on Wednesday. Both finishes came from close range from the Argentine who made it three wins out of three at a team which was winless in 11 league games before his arrival. On to the world of rugby. The International Rugby League Board revealed the next Rugby League World Cup will take place in the Southern Hemisphere in 2026. France pulled out of hosting the event, originally scheduled for 2025 in May, citing the tournament's unacceptable financial risk. An International Rugby League Board meeting in Singapore today agreed to shift the event to 2026 with a revised format as part of a new calendar. It was also decided that the Women's Rugby League World Cup will be held as a standalone tournament from 2028 with the subsequent Men's World Cup taking place in 2030. Stay tuned for the Sports Roundup. On that note, we have reached the end of tonight's newscast. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to tune in again tomorrow for this week's last edition of Primetime News, where we'll bring you all the latest updates on happenings locally, continentally, and across the globe. From myself, Salima Shimwe Feleni Masipa, and the dedicated crew behind the scenes, it's good night. <laughs>